So there have been only a few head-to-head -head studies uh, comparing one drug to another in the field of psoriatic arthritis. There are more in rheumatoid arthritis, there are more in psoriasis, but there have been a few, only a few of them in PSA. And so in the absence of being able to compare directly one drug to another to see if one has either superiority to one drug has superiority to another, or whether they're comparable to each other in terms of efficacy and safety, a, there is an alternative method that is becoming widely used um, to compare drugs to each other. And this is called network meta-analysis. And it's a statistical methodology that has become more reliable, sophisticated, and accepted by physicians as they're thinking about what medicines to steer their patients toward, by uh, insurance companies as they're thinking about uh, getting bringing new new drugs into their formulary. Um, in in Europe, for example, countries making a decision about comparative effectiveness of drugs. Uh, so it's it's something that is becoming increasingly used. And the, the basis of the way it's done is that you use, we, you, you look at a large group of phase, typically phase three studies in a, in a disease state, in this case, psoriatic arthritis. And it turns out that there's a lot of similarity from one trial to another in the patient populations, age, sex, uh, uh, sex distribution between the treatment arms, whether or not patients have been on biologic treatment before or are naive to treatment and so on. And, and so there's a lot of similarity. So what you end up doing is you use the placebo group as the anchor and assume that the placebo response is fairly similar between these trials. And then you can then look at the treatment uh, group, the group, that, the group that has been treated with whatever drug it is, in this case, bimikizumab, and then compare it to the results of the treatment group in other studies with drugs like TMF inhibitors like adalimumab or uh, IL-23 inhibitors like gazelcremab and so forth. And so in this particular study, uh, they split it into two sets of analyses. One was the group that had been previously treated with TNF inhibitors, and then the other was the, a group of, uh, uh, the group of patients that were bio-naive. And then they looked at the primary endpoints, the ACR responses, but they also looked at other items like the skin scores, PASI 75, 90, 100. They looked at uh, achievement of minimal disease activity, and they also looked at safety. And so uh, the key outcomes uh, are noted, for example, on page eight, where you have, uh, or uh, page seven, uh, where you have these uh, forest plots and uh, are, are shown where uh, bimikizumab in its standard dose of 160 milligrams monthly compares to these other drugs in terms of their, um, uh, their the different doses that were used and at their primary endpoints in the study. So that was that's the basic methodology, and uh, and it was well done. It, I think it was they followed the Prisma guidelines, which are these sort of strict guidelines for how NMAs are are to be done. And and they found the the results uh, to be good uh, for bimikizumab in many of the uh, uh, items uh, like achievement of ACR fifty. Uh, the um, uh, bimikizumab uh, ranked highly 
uh, you know, um, uh, compared to other drugs, and uh, uh, both in the bio naive population as well as the uh, bio experienced population. It ranked very highly in terms of skin responses, uh, for example, in uh, uh, achievement of um, PASI 100, uh, uh, it ranked uh, first amongst all the other treatments for achievement of PASI 100 uh, and second for achievement of uh, PASI 90 response. Uh, for achievement of min minimal disease activity, uh, it ranked uh, first uh, among uh, 13 treatments uh, and was, uh, uh, and so um, both in uh, the bio naive and the bio experienced patients. And in terms of safety, it was comparable to the other treatments. So this gives us some guidance that uh, bimikizumab is going to be a highly effective drug. Uh, and the safety profile is not going to be worse than the, uh, other treatments that we use. So I think it allows us to, as clinicians, to proceed with confidence in, in recommending it to our patients. And then it also gives guidance to payers and regulatory agencies and countries that are, you know, approving drugs for uh, treatment. Uh, it gives us uh, gives them some sense of comparativeness to the uh, to the other classes that are used. The basic answer is they didn't surprise me because when I, I I've known well the data from the uh, previous trials, uh, uh, the, the both the bio naive and bio experienced clinical trial populations in PSA. And I was aware that when I looked at the numbers of uh, uh, the percentage responders achieving ACR 50 or the percentage of patients achieving minimal disease activity criteria, which is a more holistic and comprehensive measure that looks at not only joints, but also skin and enthesitis and so on. The numbers were at the sort of the top of what I have seen in clinical trials with other agents. This just sort of solidified it with a, a more quantitative and a statistically uh, accurate uh, analysis. That utilization of a IL-17 inhibitor that inhibits both IL-17A and IL-17F which is one of the unique features about bimikizumab and sets it apart from the other IL-17A inhibitors, uh, that it's, it's going to be a very solid choice uh, for us in the clinic. Well, the key limitation I'll start with is to say that this isn't a head-to-head -head trial. So the most accurate way of comparing two drug drugs or two, are this drug class and another drug class is to put it in a head-to-head -head trial. But short of that, uh, I think that uh, in the, the strength of this trial was that it's the most up-to-date NMA analysis that we have. It, can, it, it looked at every single treatment or mechanism that we've, that we've got on board to date. And it also, uh, used very strict and rigorous PRISMA guidelines uh, to do the uh, analysis properly. Well, uh, next steps could potentially include in the future doing head-to-head -head trials and, and expecting with some confidence that, that Bimikizumab will do well in those. Uh, whether or not we do further um, either NMA analyses or another method called match adjusting uh, tri uh, comparison trials, MAIC trials, that that uh, is another thing that might will uh, likely be done in the future. <laughs> 